Okay, well welcome my friends to another 164 custom diecast workshop video for the next 29 minutes. Strap yourselves in and I will show you what's going on down here in my toy making playground. <laughs> um, my name is Doug Mount and I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing well. God is good. Uh, he blesses my life day after day, uh, week after week. So I am working this 164, it's what I do, scale, uh, Kyle Busch pedigree number 18. And as you can see, I've got it all ready, I've got it mounted on this base, and I am in the process of sealing it. I've got some clear sealer here, this is the Pledge Floor Care finish. That I use, I just put in this little bottle and apply coat after coat. I think this is coat number four, if my math is correct. And sometimes my coats are thick, sometimes they're kind of thin, but I try to be thorough with them regardless. So <clears throat> we'll get another coat on here. I've got some drilling to do tonight, so if, you, if that bothers you, it kind of bothers me to be honest. When I sometimes I watch my videos right, and and when the drill starts going, it's kind of annoying. Um, so if you guys don't like that part, you can you know get your mute button ready or fast forward through it, whatever. Um, but um, some people sometimes ask, hey, you know, let, let me see how you drill it out and. And, um, you know, just how that process goes. And I will show you that uh, again tonight. And <clears throat> also show you a little bit of the different ways that these cars are put together. And how, um, you know, just different degrees sometimes of difficulty there. But, yeah, I'll show that. Um, nice little car nice little car this thing is I um, paint it with the um, Rust-Oleum Marigold uh, that's typically the paint that I use for uh, these uh, pedigree cars uh, the Marigold color is kind of a deeper yellow and so um, so I do that yep um, <clears throat> seems to be the the best match that I can get to, you know, looking at the pictures and everything. So, when I order the decals from Mr. Pato, I order them with the yellow background removed. So, it's actually a relatively easy car to build. Um, but, my pet peeve for the hood pins is, is here as well. As you can see, the hood pins are kind of integrated into this large pedigree logo on the hood. They don't line up with the uh, die cast body um, where the hood pins are. And so it's just a, you know, it's just a less than perfect uh, custom uh, from my perspective. Most people don't really care about that, but that is a little pet peeve of mine. I try to get them as perfect as possible. Uh, that's kind of what I do. I don't work very quickly. Um, some of you guys know that, uh, and I appreciate your patience for those that have, you know, placed orders and are still waiting for things uh, to be done. Um, but yeah, so that's how this car is together. Um, just a note, right? So I painted it with the marigold paint, and then before I decaled it, I painted these side skirts black so that when I lay, laid the decal over top of it you could see the uh, the yellows not showing through right here and then once I got it all um, decaled and two coats of clear sealer on it I painted the lower valence here black these roof lines black and the spoiler black so uh, now she's got four coats on it and yeah, I, I have to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it all in all. Um, I do have a little issue here with this 
you see my decal kind of slipped down and I'm kind of stuck now because I've already got too much sealer on it and so it's less than perfect there um, yeah that's just the way it goes I got a little fuzzy here Let's see if I can get rid of that Okay, so that is that. I'm also working this 2011 Matt Kenseth Wiley X. And this car is actually going to be mine, going in, in my Kenseth collection. And he won the Dover race in 2011, one of the Dover races. I think they had two then. And what I'm, my next step is, I was looking at some pictures of the car in Victory Lane. My next step is I'm going to put some, um, I don't have white, but I have red and silver little confetti pieces that I'm going to sprinkle across here and apply so it'll be like a, you know, a race win car. And yeah, so that's my next step there. And... If I get a chance, I'll video it. Uh, I've done it before with using confetti, uh, trying to match. <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? Trying to match the confetti with what it actually looked like in Victory Lane. A little bit hard because <clears throat> there's uh, not so many great pictures of it. Um, but I do have the 124 scale uh, pictures of the car uh, with the confetti on it. But, yeah, the, the thing with this Wiley X car, because you can buy a 164 Wiley X but it doesn't come with the Crown Royal. It doesn't come with the Crown Royal here. I do not believe it says Wiley X sunglass machine on the back. I think it has something else. Um, but it's just not f outfitted with the little um, uh, unique uh, di um, decals that were raced that day. It also doesn't have the autism logo on the B pillar so but one thing I do I've got I think three coats of sealer on this and so what I'll show you what I do now so when you're building these 2010 2011 2012 cars um, you can see you got the the tail lights come up onto the spoiler and so after I get some clear sealer on it I come back and I make sure that the whole spoiler is black and so I kind of cover that up. See that? Because I don't really want that logo up onto the spoiler. So I paint that black. You can see there. See that? That right there comes up onto the spoiler. I don't want that. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. I covered it up pretty well. I think maybe not right there. Gotta be careful here. It's not a perfect match, but this is the high performance um, Rust Oleum black, and this is a tester's black, right? So sometimes you gotta be careful with your shades of black so to say um, but this is uh, this is pretty good I see I'm just gonna run this across here because I see a little black or a little line that was there sometimes when you spray you get a little um, the, the paint kind of drops down into the crevices and it doesn't always cover 100% so you have to kind of watch that but anyways not too bad. So, working at. Working at. Really like that. Really like that paint scheme. So, <clears throat> what else have I got going on? One, one word about my eBay auction. So, I listed this um, Garrett Smithley Tunnel to Towers Nurtech ODT um, 
you know, special patriotic car on eBay. And the bidding actually went up to $43 and it sold, you know, for 43 or the high bid was 43 Um, and then the winning bidder sent me a message and said, Hey, um, I, I, I can't pay it. Go ahead and send a second chance offer to the second place guy. Um, yeah, that happens <laughs> more often than I'd like to admit. So went ahead and canceled the order sent a second chance offer to the guy who bid $42 um, and he never even viewed it so that expired so I went ahead and relisted it last night so if you're interested in this car uh, the auction is up uh, for another six days um, yeah and you can see it there such is the life of an eBay seller when I try to sell things sometimes uh, to people um, as a just a straight up auction right because I listed it for 51 cents no reserve and there it goes and yeah so anyways it's frustrating but that happens and um, I don't I don't know why you know people bid and bid and bid with no real intention of paying um, I just don't understand that I, I really don't so anyways it is what it is. Let me show you what I got here. So, I've opened up a couple cars. And I want to open up a couple more. So, if you don't like to hear the drill, um, here it comes pretty soon. So, these two donor cars for these two cars is this, um, you know, Chase Elliott number 9 Hooters car. And I've already painted the uh, underbelly here, but I haven't done anything else, right? I wanted you to point. I wanted to point out these uh, these little metal rivets or posts, right? This is a pretty significant uh, one. This one's a little uh, flattened out a little bit, but these these Chevys tend to be a pain in the butt to drill out. Now let me show you this one. This is another Chevy, but this is the Xfinity Chevy of Michael Annette. And this one, the front one, is kind of sunk in a little bit. Should be a little bit easier to drill out. But you can see in the back, it's pretty much the same as this one on this side. Those rivets are a pain in the butt to drill out. Those are a little bit easier. Anyways, I'll show you that. Now, let me show you one other thing. This is the Kevin Harvick Wave 11 uh, that I'm going to make into a grave digger uh, car. And you can see the rivets here. This one is sunk in. Um, it's sunk in, not even close uh, to the amount of metal uh, as this one here. And then on this back side, it kind of matches a little bit more like that one. So this will be a, a lot easier to drill out. Um, and then I've got this Kyle Larson, and you can see this one is pretty much uh, the same as this Chevy. Uh, same amount of metal there. A little bit easier on the back side, but not much. Um, just interesting, you know. So to me, it's it's easier to open up the Fords than it is the Chevys. And I'll show you here that in a minute. So let's go. Let's go to town. I've got a couple that I've already drilled out that I have um, here. Let ah uh, let me. These have been sitting for a while. Let me uh, let me show you how I I scrape them. So once I drill them out. I put them on this little coat hanger. It's not really a coat hanger. It's uh, 14 gauge electrical wire, and just, just dip them in this stripper solution, and yeah, just let them sit there, and you can see what it looks like after. I think it's been a couple hours since I've had them here. So then I just scrape them into my trash box, and. The stripper solution does a pretty good job. Yeah, I can feel it drying up a little bit, so you don't really want to let these things sit for more than a few hours. Um, if it sits for more than 
I mean, I've let them sit overnight before, and what happens is it dries, and it becomes a little harder to scrape off. And so you really, you really want to, you know, I think at least a half an hour, maybe at least an hour, and then you don't really want to do more than probably four or five hours. Uh, that's been my experience with this product. Um, and that product is, let me show you here. The product is this product. It's the uh, Clean Strip Premium Stripper. Uh, works in works in less than 15 minutes. Um, yeah, maybe maybe for some paint, but for these die casts, I, like I said, I usually let it sit for at least an hour. Um, but don't want to really want to do more than four or five. And again, I'm trying to scrape off as much as I can. I have a utility sink here in the basement um, that I you know I use to to rinse it off. I have an old toothbrush. Um, so once I'm done scraping it, I won't show you guys that process right now or that step. But um, once I get most of this stuff scraped off, then I um, then I take it over to the sink. Um, I don't want a lot of this product nor the uh, nor the little um, uh, it's not really paint right this uh, this wrap um, going into my drain and being drained out going out my sewer system I'd rather get most of it into the trash right this just goes out with the the trash. So yeah, that's that's basically it. I got most of it. And I do two at a time. It just it just seems to work well sitting on here. Sometimes one, but Usually, two at a time. Kind of work from the from this where I'm holding it with the pliers. Kind of let gravity um, take it. Work my way down. Try to keep it in as large of a piece as possible. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I've had another very busy work week and yeah, glad glad it's Friday. Very glad it's Friday. Looking forward to a restful but productive weekend. Uh, I like to work work this hobby now. It's pretty much going to be as long as I'm really busy at work. It's pretty much going to be a be a weekend hobby. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm really getting overrun Monday through Friday and and not really have any. I hate to say it, not really any energy left at the end of my work day to really jump in and do a do a significant amount of, of work on my hobby. Um, this week I kind of just did some sealing and took some pictures and listed some cars. Uh, you can see some of the cars I've got listed up on eBay. Uh, if you search, you know, for... Uh, you know, 164 NASCAR custom die cast or NASCAR customs, you'll see, usually see some of my auctions. I have some buy it nows and I have some, uh, some auctions going on. Most of the time, usually I have one or two cars up. Uh, but yeah. So I do not have the decals from Pato that I ordered back in the beginning of December 
It has been 12 weeks, so I am if if I don't get a Monday, I am going to order that set again from Mr. Pato. And so Joey and uh, Tim and a few other guys, um, I, I I sincerely apologize for the delay. Um, but I, I ordered the decals and they didn't arrive or haven't arrived, and so I'm going to have to order them again. And I think I'm hoping it'll only take about three weeks for that stuff to arrive. So that's where I'm at. Again, I, I really apologize um, for the for the significant delay in getting those done, getting the decals in. So. Just one. I, I have to be honest. That's the only time that has ever happened. I have not gotten the decals from Pato. Um, after it's been 12 weeks, so it's pretty bizarre. Maybe they're lost in the mail, or no idea where they are. Um, so, in my 12 years of ordering decals from Pato, this is the first time that's ever happened. So, maybe I shouldn't order. You know, in December, right before the holidays, when holiday packages and all that other kind of stuff get done, and maybe I should get that ordered well in advance and instead of trying to, you know, do that during the holidays. That's the only thing I can think of. So, okay, yeah. So those are the two, and my next step is I'll carry those over to the to the sink. All right, I'm going to drill these out, and I'll show you guys how I do that. So, if you're not interested in the noise, go ahead and mute your, mute your phones or mute your, your video at this time. So again, I've got um, a 13, uh, 1360 force, is that what this is? No. This is 5 16 I'm sorry. I need to know what my drill bit is. It's a 5 16 drill bit. And my 36 volt DeWalt drill. Let's go. Trying to be super careful because I don't want to bust through this thing and tear up all this plastic under my belly. Once I think I got it, I just use this little pair of scissors and I kind of just carefully lift up. Alright, one down. Let's do the back side. My drill bit's not the newest, so I might be up for a new one here pretty soon.
almost there. Try not to bend it. You know, I try not to to bend it up to where this gets in there. And then I just kind of take my X-Acto knife and, and I clean it out a little bit. Try to cut off any, like, little edges that are on there. So that it's relatively smooth and flat at the top when I go to put the JB weld in there. I don't have to really do it right now, but that is one thing I do. All right, so I have to say this this piece is really nice. This is a nice piece compared to uh, previous years. It's it, it hasn't dropped in quality. I think it's a it's a it's a nice sturdy piece. Um, it's it's pretty sharp. I like it compared to previous years. It's it's. Uh, it's definitely uh, um, definitely hasn't gone down in in quality. Let's put it that way. Now, <clears throat> this is where it gets a little interesting. So, so you can see there's this post here, but it's not really holding anything. I think these windows are leaned on to hold this back piece in place because I can just kind of, you know, pop that off and wiggle that out. I don't have to drill that out pretty much at all. But I have to drill out this, this there. Oh, that's holding the uh, dash in place. And that's interesting because that's not really like a, maybe I can just kind of squeeze. Sometimes I get this in here and I squeeze it. And I can get it to come off that way. Yep, there you go. I don't have to drill guys I'm not gonna and then this this is held in super see it's really loose look at that I just pop that off crazy so the dash was pretty much holding that piece in so that's ready to go in the soup and then I'll drill this piece out but I can see I am pretty much out of time <laughs> But uh, I will drill this out, and yeah, it'll be it'll be done here in a minute. So God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great night, and we will see you in the next video.